Royal family, what's up? This is Rockland. Today on Passport Kings, we are in Tanzania, uh, Zanzibar, and we are just hanging out in this hotel called the Royal Zanzibar. And I just want to show you a little bit around this place in Africa so you can enjoy and see what I see. Engage. This is Passport Kings. Welcome aboard abroad. My name is Rock Land. I'm a travel advisor. I make Passport Kings travel videos to inform, review, and excite you about vacation destinations and other travel related information. If this is a topic you like, subscribe to Passport Kings and ring the notification bell so you can be the first in the know when I upload new content. Flying to Zanzibar from the US is an all day deal. The best way we found to get there is using Turkish Airlines. The ride from Atlanta to Istanbul, Turkey is about 12 hours. Then you have to transfer to another seven hour flight down to Zanzibar's sister city, Dar es Salaam. I was used to saying Tanzania, but the locals let me know that the right pronunciation is Tanzania. The visa to enter Tanzania is $100 per person. You can pay that at the airport as you're leaving customs. Once I was told by residents that Dar es Salaam means the land of black people, I had to go check it out. The first thing you'll notice is how much people's facial features look more like African Americans than anywhere else I've ever been. If they didn't start talking Swahili, you would swear that they were from cities in America. A lot of them came up to me thinking I would be able to have a fluent conversation with them because we looked so much alike. They were surprised when I didn't understand them. Dar es Salaam was a great stopover on our way to Zanzibar. We stayed for two days in the Best Western just to get over the jet lag. And since we were there, all the way on the east side of Africa, and I don't get enough chances to travel this far, I wanted to see everything. While in this metropolis, we had a tour guide named George to show us around. I'm gonna put his contact information in the description of this video in case you wanna learn about the history and development of Tanzania. It's also great just to have a great contact when you arrive. The language spoke most in Tanzania is Swahili, but the second language that almost everyone speaks is English. Plus they have almost a 0% rate of COVID-19 there. Communicating with the people in local shops, restaurants, and everywhere else is very easy. While here, you'll pick up some Swahili phrases too that will help you navigate this experience. For instance, a phrase everyone uses is Hakuta Matata, which means to take it easy and not get overexcited about things. Dada means sister, and Kaka means brother. Jamba means uncle. Asante is thank you, and Karibu is your welcome. Mambo is used in Tanzania for hello, and Jambo is mostly used in Zanzibar that also means hello and how are you. Add po to any of those phrases and you will be saying very much. So if you really appreciate someone, say Asante po. Lastly, okay okay is sawa sawa. We toured most of the city and made sure we got to see the fish markets. This experience was very unique. The people were friendly, but you could tell that they were very busy. Fishing isn't the easiest job in the world. You could also tell that they have respect for each other and for each other's hustle. Once someone is selling you something, the others will back away. They really want you to enjoy their country. It could be overwhelming at first when they are aggressively trying to sell you their souvenirs or offer you cab services. But once the deal is made, you will realize that they are just trying to make a living and competition is fierce. They will treat you like a brother who is just from the other side of the world and they want to know all about you. George wanted to take us on a safari and to Kilimanjaro. The largest mountain in the world was about six hours away by car or one hour and 45 minutes by air. Plus they said the weather there is ultra cold. So we wound up going to the bar instead. But you can check out all of George's tours on his Facebook page. And I'll be linking all of that information below as well. Make sure you watch to the end of this video so you can get my free ebook on how to make money in the travel industry. And if you haven't yet, hit subscribe and press the notification bell. After chilling in Dar es Salaam, we headed over to the island of Zanzibar. You can get there either by plane or ferry. I chose the ferry for the experience. There are a lot of ferries going over there, but we took a company called Kilimanjaro 7. 
My research showed that this was the most popular, well-established, and well-kept ships available out of all of the options. It was very clean and a smooth ride. It's a great opportunity to see the city's coastline. Although the locals will brag about how there is little to no COVID in Tanzania, I still decided to wear my mask. There are a lot of locals, but a lot of tourists are also on this ferry. And even with the testing that they did, there was just too many people for me to risk it. And that trip took about an hour too. Once you arrive in Zanzibar, you will surprisingly get another stamp on your passport. I had no idea that they treat Zanzibar as another country entirely. The area that you arrive in will be called Stone Town. My driver told me that Stone Town is the richest part of Zanzibar. It still has forts and old buildings that were built for their liberation. The structures are old and in my opinion needs to be torn down and made way for new modern construction. But I also understand that people love to latch on to their glorious history. As recently as 2005, an excavation at Kuumbi Cave in southeastern Zanzibar found heavy duty stone tools that showed humans were there at least 22,000 years ago. Their history is Paleolithic. From the ferry in Stone Town to the resort in Nungui is about another 45 minute cab ride. While riding through, you would notice a lot of people are living in pretty harsh conditions. The toll of their liberation is still seen to this day. The islands gained independence from Britain in December 1963 as a constitutional monarchy. And then a month later, there was the bloody Zanzibar Revolution, in which several thousand Arabs and Indians were killed and thousands more were sent back to their countries of origin. This led to the Republic of Zanzibar and Pemba. That April, the Republic was subsumed into Tanzania, but it's mostly a self governed state. Their recovery is obviously on its way, but they still have a lot to do. When we finally arrived to our resort, the Royal Zanzibar, we were finally able to relax. And there is no more perfect place to relax. This place looks amazing. The water is the bluest I've ever seen. At some points, you can look directly into the bottom of the ocean. The grounds are spotless and the staff is extremely friendly. There's so many large pools, including the infinity pool, that you will never feel overcrowded. People are sailing by waving jumbo, and you may even see dolphins. I guarantee you, you would love it. It's almost at the most northern point of Zanzibar. It will feel like you're stepping into a different world. It has untapped beauty that obviously only a few people know about. Then there's the rooms. All right, so I am at the Royal Zanzibar now, and we're gonna go in and check out my room that is in Zanzibar, we just got off a long ferry ride, and we um, also had to take maybe about an hour uh, cab ride from the ferry all the way to Zanzibar, to this uh, resort. So this is the room that we have, and like I said, um, this is after a long trip, and we stayed in Dar es Salaam for a really long time. Um, what was it, two days we stayed in Dar es Salaam. So I want y'all to take a look at the room that I got, because it's dope, yeah? All right, so, um, well, I guess we can start in the bathroom over here. It's like just a really nice, sweet size bathroom that we have. We have uh, the nice tub here, the shower there, and let me see the shower right here. Huh? And then, of course, the toilet area here with the boudet and all right, so I want y'all to see this room though. So when you go this way, we have the um, bed here, uh, the living, living area there, uh, the big TV telling us about how terrible things are going on in the US. And I want you to see my outer deck because this view is fly.
The Maasai people were one of the five biggest tribes in Tanzania. They are easy to point out by the way they're dressed. They're usually wearing red robes and carrying a spear. If you say jumbo to them, they'll go out of their way to reply and make sure that you're having the time of your life. A lot of them work for the resort, but you will see them on the beach playing sports. The food many of them eat is called ugadi. They say they don't like it very much, but it's cheap and they were raised on it. I didn't get a chance to try it, and a lot of them told me I'm not missing anything. I guess it's like grits. The menu at the Royal Zanzibar was pretty limited, but so was a lot of other things. It wouldn't be fair for me to give you the cons about our experience on this resort without first addressing that this resort has been closed for over six months due to COVID-19. Our visit was within the first two weeks of them opening back up. None of the usual buffets were open, so we had sit-down meals whenever any of the four restaurants were open. It was cool and I actually felt good about not pigging out. I'm on a diet. But for breakfast, you can choose from typical American or European breakfast at the restaurants and you can eat while watching boats float by and people waving at you. Just don't leave your food unattended because the crows are gangster and they'll swoop down on your plate if they get a chance. Again, the people you meet will be extremely friendly and are genuinely concerned that you're having a great time in Zanzibar. They will tell you their entire life story, ask you about your life, answer any questions you have about anything that you're curious about, and most importantly, they're taking it easy. They hakuta matata everything. What you will see is not very different than what you will see while shuttling to most resorts on Caribbean islands, but they're working on it. You can also see that this island is more religious. Most women are wearing saris and other head coverings. Zanzibar is 95% Muslim, where Tanzania is about 40% Muslim, 40% Christian, and about 20% other minority religions. The main attractions on this island is the butterfly farms, the monkey exhibit, prison island, the spice farms, stone town, swimming with dolphins, and the rock restaurant has a big reputation. And again, it's truly amazing how much they look like African Americans. There may be some truth to the Israelites that say African Americans are from East Africa. We visited the spice farm and learned a lot about how fruits and spices are grown. It was a cool experience and we enjoyed helping out the people who worked there. The Rock is internationally known because of its bizarre placement. The restaurant is literally in the ocean. If the tides are high, you will have to sail over to it. We happened to get there at low tide, so we were able to walk through the marsh to the rock stairs. I kind of wish we went at high tide, but it was still definitely an experience that we won't forget. The food was great and you could tell it was fresh out of the sea. Ubers are available in Dar es Salaam, but not on the island of Zanzibar. If you need a ride around Zanzibar, you need to contact our new friend, Youssef. He has a very clean van, he's cool as a fan, and he's very knowledgeable about Zanzibar and very skilled in these streets. People drive crazy, and mopeds, bikes, people, and even cows may cut you off. I would not suggest you driving yourself around the island. I will also leave Youssef's contact info in the description below. If you're interested in having your own travel business, either full-time or part-time, check the description so you can see the next webinar that's coming up. Overall, I had a great time at the Royal Zanzibar and the journey getting there. I recommend Tanzania for anyone who wants to visit Africa. I also hope this video shows skeptical non-travelers that Africa is not a scary place to visit. The resort is put together beautifully. The windows in every room are gigantic and the scenery is epic. The beach is accessible right down the steps from the resort and the excursions are easy to find. The weather goes from cool to ultra hot and if it rains, it'll only last for a few minutes. Visit Africa, you will not regret it. And the next time someone 
comes out their mouth talking about you shouldn't travel to Africa, make sure you show them this video and show them all the great times and the exciting adventures that you can have in Africa. Like a king of passports. Peace.